Hey guys, Robert here. Today I am going to unbox my new 2023 Transition Spur. I will also talk about why I chose this particular bike and later in the video talk about the three upgrades I'm going to make in the next week or so in an attempt to get the bike down another pound and a half. So first off, why did I purchase a bike at all? I already have two perfectly capable and fun mountain bikes. I have a cross country bike, which is a Niner Jet RDO, and the other bike is a Ibis Ripley LS. Both bikes full Shimano XT and all high-end components. But one has to go. <laughs> Why? Well, two years ago when I was living in Costa Rica, I had a nice two-car garage set up where I had all of my toys, the killer bike workshop, the works. But I also moved back to DC two years ago into a two-bedroom apartment where one of the two bedrooms is now my everything room. Office, bike workshop, bike storage, kid storage. So I knew one of these two bikes had to go, but which one? In fact, what category bike do I even wanna buy? So first, I don't live in an area where a long travel bike is necessary. So I looked at the trail bike, down country, and cross country categories. After much research and loads of YouTube reviews on a ton of bikes, I decided that the new down country category would meet my needs. Still very capable on the tech stuff and still a really capable climber as well. But what does that term even mean, down country? First off, I find all this micro categorying over the top, but I guess manufacturers had to differentiate their bikes in some way. Anyway, the idea is that a bike is, that is relatively light, say 25 to 28 pounds, uh, 110 to 120 rear suspension and 120 to 140 front suspension up front, generally with a slacker geometry than a pure cross country rig. So as I dug into this category, I narrowed it down to three bikes, the Trek Top Fuel, the Ibis Ripley, and of course the Transition Spur. I eliminated the Trek because of weight. With full XT set up in a large, it came in at around 28, 29 pounds. So it was down to the Ripley and the Spur. This was a tough call, but in the end, the fact that I already had a Ripley was what made me go with the Transition Spur. Because both of them had spectacular reviews. I knew the Ripley myself, so I know it was a great bike, but I would go with something a little different. So why did I purchase the Spur specifically? Well, first and foremost, the bike consistently gets excellent reviews by anyone who rides it. I must have watched a good 20 YouTube videos and just about everyone raved about the bike. I also wanted a lightweight bike. All this talk about easy to pedal uphill when referring to enduro bikes is fine and dandy, but a lightweight bike is simply easier to climb and you can spend more time on it during the course of a ride. So I gleaned from many of these videos that this is a highly capable bike in a variety of rough terrain. A lively climber and really lightweight. Not to mention the fact that it's a super good looking bike with clean straight lines. And finally, Transition is a small bike company. I actually contacted these guys out in Seattle and spoke with Dave at length, who spent a good amount of time walking through the bikes, talk, telling me about the company. I was sold. Let's take a quick look at the bike. First off, the color, wow, is way different than what I imagined on the video. It looked more blue. This is, I would call like a sea green really a deep green with maybe a, a little bit of blue. Let's just take a look at the components for a minute. This is the Rock Shock Sid, the Debonair Air 120 fork. It's got the, it's got the SRAM G2 RS disc brakes with 180 front, 160 rear disc. Here's the crank, aluminum crank, GX derailleur. This is the XO cassette. One up dropper seat post, aluminum bars, and then the aluminum race face effect stem. The rear shot is the Sid Lux 120 also. Now, I mentioned to you before that I'm going to make some switches. I'm gonna go with carbon wheels. I'm going to change out the cranks for SRAM XO, aluminum bar for a carbon bar. And finally, I'm gonna switch out the seat here to one of my favorite seats, which is the Aragon. Not only will these four upgrades improve the performance of the bike, are going to decrease the weight, which is my uh, one of my key objectives. Now, let's get it on the scale and see what it weighs in a size large. So the stock weight came in at 28.13. 
I was a bit surprised at that. I was thinking maybe it would be in the mid-27 range. But let's weigh it with the new parts and we'll see what happens. So at 27.02, which was about 1.1 pounds, we really didn't bring it down quite as much as I had hoped. That's a lot of money to spend for 1.2 pounds. Ideally, these three significant upgrades will make a big difference in the overall performance of the bike. That's most certainly what I'm hoping for anyway. Okay, guys, that's it. All that's left now is to get this baby out of the trails and see that it lives up to its reputation. Okay, guys, that's a wrap. And do me a favor, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to follow some of our other content, go ahead and subscribe. As always, this is your Intrepid Traveler, Roberto, over now.